Hey everyone, Michael O'Brien here. Today we're gonna to talk about how to get started and actually going out to perform when you don't really have a show ready to go. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Oftentimes I will see someone say like, hey, like I wanna take this gig, it's a, it's a decent paying gig, it would be like my first one. Uh, but I don't really have like a 30 or 40 minute show. Like I don't have enough material to be able to cover it. What can I do? I really want to start doing shows, but I don't have an act. So what do I do? So in this video, we're actually going to talk about that. Before I do, I just wanted to give a shout out to all of my newest Mob Squad members. So today I wanted to welcome Thomas Maloney and Sven Wengerter, thank you guys so much for becoming Mob Squad members. You guys will get access to all of those tutorials and exclusive members only videos. If you guys would like to join, just like these two did, go ahead and click that join button on the channel just below this video here. And uh, you guys will get access to all that cool stuff for just $1 a month as well as your very own shout out. I also encourage if you haven't already, please be sure to click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. That way you guys can stay caught up on all of the future content that I will be putting out. So just to discuss the content of this video here now, what can you do? How can you go out and perform paid gigs if you don't really have a 30 or 45 minute show put together? So in, it's kind of a tricky thing to do. I, what I would recommend is putting together a strolling act that way you can start booking shows and booking clients. And the nice thing about a strolling act is you can fill that one hour time slot that the, the, the client wants you to fill by doing strolling magic, mingling, going from group to group. And you only really have to have three solid effects under your belt, put together like a little seven or so minute little mini routine uh, using those three f effects that you really know. And you will be able to do you know, a strolling gig. So for me, for example, I know my sponge ball routine, I have my linking rings and a piece of card magic, usually my ambitious card and my card to pocket routine is what I would close out my act on. And then I use like the purse frame when I'm doing my sponge ball routine and I call back to that a couple times during the act. I'll pull out like a handkerchief out of the purse frame. Obviously I use it in the opener to pull out the sponge balls. And then at the very end, I have the spectator sign card folded up and appears inside of that purse. So that's like a little seven or so minute, maybe even less depending on how many tables you have to get to or how many guests you have to get to, a little routine that you can put together. And you just make sure that you rehearse the absolute crap out of those three effects, polish them up as best you can, and you are ready to start booking clients. Now, in the meantime, while you're doing that and you're starting to get some shows under your belt, you're getting some reviews for your Yelp, you are getting some experience, maybe you're getting some video clips for your highlight reel, for your website, or whatever it is that you're doing, the fact is that you're booking shows and you're actually, you know, even making some money as well while you're doing this. In the meantime now, you are focusing on the side on putting together your close-up show, your formal your formal close-up show. For me, a formal close-up show can be anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes, depending on the performer. And again, you don't have to know that many tricks. You can really put together a 20 or 30 minute show with just performing five or six effects. It doesn't have to be like 20 effects that you're gonna be cramming in there. The thing is, is that you also have to think about uh, all the little time in between effects, bringing a spectator up on stage to assist you handing a deck of cards out to the audience to be examined and shuffled, things like this. So for example, for me, like a 20 minute close-up show would be, I have a spectator come up, I do my sponge ball opener, I do some sponge balls with them, have a second spectator come up, have the ball jump from one person's hand to the other, have the balls multiply in their hands, get a big round of applause, invite them back down to their seats. There was like five minutes already right there, just in that opener. Then maybe I produce a bottle of you know Guinness. I uh, go into my linking ring routine. I use the Guinness bottle and the, and the bottle opener that I used in the show and in the linking, linking ring routine and all that stuff. You guys have seen my ring routine. You know what I'm talking about. All of that stuff there and, and that now. That's like another five to seven minutes. So right there, that's just the two effects in. And I'm already at almost my 15 minute mark. 
Of course, you're talking in between shows. You know, uh, anyone here from out of town? Is it anyone's first time seeing a magic show? Is it anyone's last time seeing a magic show? You know, you're kind of playing with the audience. You're kind of interacting with them in between effects. You know, and then maybe for my next piece, uh, I'll perform Venom Cube. So I'll have a, a guest come up. I'll have them shuffle the cube and then I go into my Venom Cube routine. Um, if you guys wanna see my Venom Cube routine, I just did a video uh, called Top Five Effects in My Act That Are Not Mine. I recommend watching that video if you haven't seen it already so you guys can get some more ideas on how to stretch this out because all Venom Cube is, is a cube is shuffled up and then another cube is introduced and the two cubes match, all the sides match on, on both sides of the cubes. You can stretch that into like a seven minute performance right there. So now you're about 20 minutes already and you've only done three tricks. So imagine you wanna make it into like a, like a 30 minute thing. You only need like two more five minute effects or so when you're already at your 30 minute mark. So with five, maybe six pieces of magic, you can put together the 30 minute set. It's not impossible to do. So my honest advice to you, if you wanna start going out, you want to start putting together, you know, actual performances for clients. You want to start actually booking gigs is to put together a strolling routine. That's how I got started. I put together a strolling routine. You only need to know three tricks to get started, rehearse the crap out of those three tricks and start doing shows for clients. In the meantime, while you're doing that, now you are building up your proper formal close-up show. After you've put together those pieces of magic, now you have that 30 minute show. So now you have two products that you can pitch to your clients. You can do strolling and you can do a 30 minute show. And now you can actually put together a package where you can say, hey, if you want both, I'll do both and I'll give you a little bit of a discount because it's like a package deal where you get both things put together. If the client wants a 45 minute or an hour long show, now you're gonna have to you know, add more and more and more magic to that show that you're doing. And I don't expect that you're gonna go from not knowing a single trick to having like a one hour show overnight. That's not gonna happen. Obviously you're gonna build on this while you're going. But if you can spend like a couple of months putting together a solid three tricks that you can start performing at Restaurant Magic or for cocktail events, wedding receptions, backyard barbecues, whatever it is, you can start building your portfolio, you can start getting reviews, you can start getting videos, like little video clips for your social media, for your for your YouTube channel, for your website, whatever it is, and you can start building that reputation as a performer. That's what you wanna do. You wanna get the ball rolling on that and then work your way up to having bigger and bigger shows that go on for longer, Next thing you know, a few years down the line, you have all of these props and everything that you've invested in that you've added little by little by little. And now you're ready to do like a full hour long, like cruise ship show, just because you've taken the time to invest in adding those bits and pieces over time. The last thing I'm gonna say on this now is make sure that the tricks that you include, that you're working on, that you're building for your performance, for your professional gigs, is material that you can master and be able to perform, uh, I don't wanna say quickly isn't the right word, but to be able to do um, efficiently and not learn like a hundred different tricks that some of them work some of the time, some of them don't work some of the time, like you don't wanna do that, right? Like for me, a sponge ball trick, easy to do, licking rings, easy to do, and an ambitious card, easy to do. That's all you need to know to start going out and doing some strolling gigs, right? So don't overwhelm yourself. Don't feel like you need to learn a hundred tricks in like a couple weeks. And one last piece of advice on this, do not book shows that you don't have material for. Don't book a stage show and promise your client that you're gonna perform like a metamorphosis trunk where you put your assistant inside the box and then they vanish and then you appear on the outside of the box and all this stuff happens and you're like, where am I gonna get a box? And where am I gonna get an assistant? Like, don't do that, <laughs> right? Make sure before you even advertise your services that you have those three tricks polished and ready to go so you can start doing walk around routines. Put your name out there as a strolling magician. 
start booking shows, and in the meantime, build up your formal acts. I hope this was very helpful for you guys, and I hope this gives you a little bit of an insight on how to break in from being, you know, just a magician that just knows a couple of tricks to being a working professional. And the last disclaimer I'm gonna put on this is 95% of this advice that I'm giving you now is, you know, assuming that COVID isn't a thing. So I'm not saying that you need to go out and start performing right now during this pandemic, especially if you don't feel comfortable doing that. Make sure you guys are staying safe. Make sure you're keeping your clients safe. If you guys want advice on how to perform during COVID, I have another video on that and this advice from Magicians playlist as well on how to stay safe during COVID-19. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you next time.